Welcome to the exciting world of metal smithing. Whether you're a beginner jeweler or have some experience in other techniques, you'll need the right tools to create your beautiful one-of-a-kind pieces. In this video, we'll take a look at the most basic tools you'll need to get started with metal smithing. Let's start with the forming tools. First, we have pliers, half round, round, flat nose, chain nose and bonus ring bending ones. These are extremely useful for a number of jobs and it's great to have at least two flat pliers that will help you with precise handling of small pieces like jump rings for example. You will need flash cutters or stride shears to cut your metal. Bench peg is a must have. This tool may not seem like it but it's used for so many jobs including sewing, forming, shaping, drilling and many more. Speaking of sewing, you will absolutely need a jeweler's saw frame. There are many types available, some are adjustable, some are fixed and they are perfect for your sewing needs. You will be cutting out shapes out of the metal sheet, bezels, wires, the list goes on. Your saw frame will need saw blades. Don't buy cheap ones, they will break and cause you frustration and will make learning process much harder. Get good quality ones, Swiss or these nano saw blades which are excellent and very well priced. You can start with these grades 2 odd, 4 odd and 6 odd for various thicknesses. Refer to charts to check what saw blades you need. Lubrication for saw blades is necessary. You can use beeswax, artificial wax or a handy blade butter which will last you a long long time. Chasing hammer for variety of jobs like flattening, shaping and adding textures is the most basic and useful hammer you can get. Rawhide or a rubber mallet is another necessary hammer for forming and flattening. This one doesn't leave any marks on the metal and won't enlarge your rings on the mandrel when shaping. Ring mandrel with sizes is another essential tool. You will use it for making rings and for overall shaping of the metal. Steel block is absolutely worth getting for so many forming jobs like stamping, shaping, flattening of the metal and others. Files. These are a must, but you don't need too many. Get a couple of hand files in CAT 0 and CAT 2, which are coarser ones, and some needle files in several shapes, flat, half round and round. You can get some coarser and some finer ones. Here's a bonus. A coarse file from a hardware store is great too and it is much cheaper. Now on to soldering tools. You will absolutely need a soldering surface. It can be a board, soldering block, charcoal brick or a honeycomb block. I recommend having two so that you can create a wall and prevent the heat from escaping. Charcoal brick is excellent as it reflects the heat so it's perfect for smaller torches. Speaking of, you will need a torch. It can be a small butane torch to start with. I use Dremel since I started and I also use a torch I got at a hardware store. One is finer and the other one has a bit stronger flame. To connect your metal, you will need solder. I get mine in the form of a wire and I cut it to smaller pieces. You can also get a solder paste, ideally the hard one, in a syringe. It's very handy, especially with smaller bits. For the solder to flow, you need flax. It could be a borax cone with a dish or a handy flax, which I now use all the time. Solder pick is very important. It works as an extension of your hand that's fire resistant. So you use it to pick up solder, etc. Reverse action tweezers help you keep metal pieces in one place and arranged for soldering. Brass tweezers, just like solder pick, help you operate things on the solder board. And with the copper tweezers, you can safely dip them in the pickling solution without risking contamination. Pickling solution is placed in a pickling pot and ideally it is kept warm. It can be vinegar with salt 
or a stronger one, acid-based solution quenching bowl, which you can use to quench your metal after soldering. Time for sanding and polishing tools. Here you can get wet and dry papers, sanding and buffing sticks, polishing papers, rotary tool and a flex shaft, and various attachments, which I show you in the next section. And polishing compounds. There's a large variety out there. I use Luxie, which is less toxic. Attachments for your rotary tool. I highly recommend these radial bristle disc attachments from coarse to fine in yellow, white, red, blue, pink and green. If silicone attachments, white, black, blue and pink. If pumice attachments, honey and grey, and these are safer on the gemstones. Then sanding discs, which make sanding and cleaning jobs much faster. Some drill bits in several sizes. And burrs, a couple of ball ones, smaller and bigger. It depends on your needs, so you need to experiment, but a 1mm and a 2 or 3mm would be a great start. Cap burr in size 1mm to 1.2 millimeter for rounding wires of ear wires, studs and prongs. And last but not least, polishing buffs to use with polishing compounds. I use felt and cotton. Tools for stone setting. You will need a ring clamp, which is a great tool for holding metal in general for many jobs, not only stone setting. Bezel pusher, which is used to close the bezel around the gemstone. And a burnisher, which you use to burnish the edge of the bezel and smooth out. Sizing. The ruler, calipers, ring sizer, dividers, very important, safety, get yourself safety glasses, face mask, ideally with filters, regular face mask, finger protectors or a tape, and all of these things are available in hardware shops and online. In addition, you should get a small fire extinguisher. Be safe and don't take unnecessary risks. This set is the most basic one and will be enough for you to start making rings, necklaces, pendants and to learn sewing, polishing and stone setting. Of course, there are many other tools you can get that will make your life easier, like a rolling mill, magnifiers, third hand, bench polisher or a disc cutter, etc. But today we're sticking to the basics. Most tools can be found at jewelers, shops, hardware stores and on online websites. I would recommend buying from reputable places so that the tools are of good quality and will serve you for a long time. Investing in good quality pliers and files is especially important, trust me. Thank you Pepe Tools for partnering with me on this video. You can find their tools linked below. I wholeheartedly recommend Pepe's products for the quality and outstanding customer service. I hope this list will help you gather all the tools you need to start metalsmithing. Make sure that you enjoy the creative process and have fun making jewelry. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!